The tractive force method is an alternative to the permissible velocity method for the design of erodible channels. The tractive force method has a strong theoretical and empirical basis. The quadratic resistance law is in which tau sub naught is the bottom shear stress or tractive stress. Rho is the density of water. F is the dimensionless Chessy friction factor and V is the mean velocity. Replacing the mean velocity for its expression following Chessy in which R is the hydraulic radius and S is the bottom slope, replacing rho equal gamma over G. Which reduces to for a hydraulically wide prismatic channel for which the hydraulic radius may be approximated as the flow depth, the tractive stress is the actual value of tractive stress is where C is either C sub S applicable to the channel sides or C sub B applicable to the channel bottom. The variation of C is shown here for the sides on the left and for the bottom on the right. This figure shows that the full value of tractive stress is developed for a hydraulically wide channel for which the ratio of bottom width to depth is greater than 10. The tractive force method uses the tractive stress ratio. The tractive stress ratio is the ratio of tractive stress on the channel sides, tau sub s, to tractive stress on the channel bottom, that is, on level ground, tau sub l. Tau sub s is a function of friction angle of the material and side slope of the channel, while tau sub l is only a function of the friction angle. Static equilibrium leads to the tractive stress on the sides. in which W sub S is the submerged weight of the particle, A is the effective area of the particle, theta is the particle friction angle, and phi is the channel side slope. On the level surface, with phi equal to zero, the tractive stress reduces to Tractive force ratio is This formula is reduced 
by using the appropriate trigonometric identities to The friction angle, or angle of repose of non-cohesive materials, is shown here. The applicable particle size is that for which 25% of the material, by weight, is larger. The permissible tractive stress is the maximum shear stress that will not cause erosion on a level surface. This value, obtained from laboratory experiments, is called the critical tractive stress. This figure shows critical tractive stresses for non-cohesive materials as a function of particle size, with the sand size materials shown to the left and the gravel size materials to the right. Note that for the sand size materials, the critical tractive stress is a function of the content of fine sediment in the water. The higher values of critical shear stress correspond to canals with high content of fine sediment. The lower values of critical shear stress correspond to canals with low content of fine sediment. The lowest values of critical shear stress correspond to clear water. This is the principle of hungry water. The freer the water is from fine sediment, the more it will have a tendency to pick up sediments. Consequently, the lower the critical shear stress. This figure shows critical tractive stresses for cohesive materials as a function of Boyd's ratio. Higher Boyd's ratio corresponds to lower critical shear stress and vice versa. For sinuous channels, the values of critical shear stress are reduced to account for scour. A 10% reduction is recommended for slightly sinuous channels, 25% for moderately sinuous, and 40% for very sinuous. The steps in the application of the tractive force method are the following. 1. Assume B over Y and Z given Q, S, and N. 2. Assume that the tractive force on the sides is controlling the design, which is the case when the material is the same on both sides and bottom. When the material in sides and bottom are different, the tractive force on the sides may not always be controlling the design. When the material on the sides is stronger than the material on the bottom, the tractive force on the bottom may be controlling the design. 3. Calculate the coefficient C sub S of the acting shear T sub S equal C sub S gamma Y S. 4. Determine the friction angle theta based on particle size or voyage ratio. 5. Calculate the side angle phi equal R tan of 1 over Z. 6. Calculate the tractive stress ratio, K. 7. Calculate the critical shear stress on level ground, tau sub L. 8. Calculate the critical shear stress on the sides, tau sub S equal K times tau sub L. 9. Set the critical shear stress tau sub S equal to acting shear stress T sub S and solve for flow depth Y. 10. With Y and B over Y, calculate B. 11. With Q, B, Z, S, and N, calculate the normal depth Y sub N. 12. If Y sub N is larger than Y, assume a larger B over Y and repeat the procedure. 13. If Y sub N is smaller than Y, assume a smaller B over Y and repeat the procedure. 14. Continue the iterative process until the calculated normal depth Y sub N matches the depth Y obtained from equating acting and critical shear stresses.